So Lenny, congratulations. It's been six years in the making. You've finally come out of retirement to sign for Open Goal Broomhill. How does it feel to be back? <laughs> well, it's a dream come true to start, but to be back here, my last game of year ever, my fit was hanging out that dugout. So <laughs> <laughs> bringing back a few of the memories, but no, I mean, it generally is a, it's a dream come true. I mean, it's always been in the back of my mind um, to come back and play. Um, never though really pushed it to, for it to happen. And then last, I think it was last season, um, I started to think that maybe maybe there's still something in me. Um, and then over the last few months, I put the work in. But for it actually be, for this to, to be the day it's happened, it's, it's incredible. So you kind of touched on it there. You've mentioned it's been niggling away in the back of your mind, but where's the real desire to say, now's the time to come back? I don't know what... I don't know when, when that actually came, but I think, though, as I said, it has been niggling there and I would maybe then go and train with a sort of local team or whatever it was, but I never then, after a few sessions, I was like, nah, it's not for me, I just don't want to go back to it, but this time it felt different. Now, I don't know where it was, and I think maybe a big thing was every Monday when we'd done the podcast, Si and Andy were coming in and sort of an hour before we started, they two were continually talking about the game at the weekend, talking about the dressing room, and... That was a big thing for me that I love being in a dressing room. So um, I don't know if that kind of triggered it. And then something's inside me. It's just like, I can still do this. Um, and then here we are. So it's been a while since you've last played. Have you noticed any sort of major differences in how yourself is now playing in comparison to what you were before? No. Do you know what? I, when I first started the training, my sharpness was, felt it was never going to come back. And I kept sort of, I was speaking to certain certain players who are still playing or players that had been out in a lot of long-term injuries and I said, does it come back? And they said, well, it will. But I thought because it was such a long time that I had kicked a ball, I was like, I don't think it will come back. And I had not, in that time, in that sort of six year, seven year period, I had never, um, I never done anything. I never done any fitness work, never done any running. Um, so I genuinely thought it wasn't going to come back because we were doing a lot of sessions and it was just nothing. I was, I was getting nothing out of it, as in sharpness wise or on the ball or whatever. And then one five sides we played, I felt something click. I actually felt I was getting onto boys a wee bit, as in shouting, I'm not shouting them that way, but just, and I felt, I'm now I feel that I'm getting back to sort of the player was. And when I've joined in when the training and stuff, that I've, um, I felt that that's there. Whether the speed's there, because that was my game, do you know what I mean? Um, but whether that's there at the same level, but listen, a good player can adapt to, to it, can't they? So. Of course. So what do you, and obviously ultimately the gaffer Sai, what do you think you can bring to the squad as a player now? So you've touched on that your game was all about speed. If you've maybe not got that, what do you think you can bring now? Well, I, I think in, in one v, especially in 1v1 situations um, in the final third, that's where I, that's my strongest thing. And, um, I've never been somebody that's mad on sort of possession or, or good in sort of situations like that. You can get by and stuff, and that's part of a big part of obviously with the way you play, keep the ball. But when it comes into that final third, that's where I think as an attacking player you've got to do something different, and that's where I've always that's where I've always been good at. Uh, and as I said, I don't feel I've lost that. So I feel that a big thing for me is listen, my shooting's horrendous at times. Kick the ground half the time before that <laughs> uh, before I shoot. But when it comes to sort of assists and stuff and getting by players and being that difference, I think I can still do that. So you. You've obviously been keen to ensure that it's not viewed as an old pals act. You want to be treated like any other player and you'll only earn the right to play if you're good enough and if, if you're fit enough. What have the conversations been like with Sai already and how did this opportunity first come about? Well, when, when, when it first happened, when, when uh, the team... I, had, I think it was before the team sort of talked the team was happening, I had already thought I want to get back fit. And, uh, and then when obviously the team it got sort of, it was almost finalised and the talks were happening, there was never a conversation between me and Sai that I would be part of it I play, as a player. That was never the case and until I felt that maybe I was ready to then play with a team. And then when that came to that, then Sai obviously said, listen, I'd like you to be a part of I think you can make a difference uh, in the games and in training and stuff. Um, but obviously it's, it's open goal, but when it comes to the football, it's nothing to do with that. It's all about who you are as a player, your fitness levels, um, um, and it would never be that, from my side, I would never put myself in a position, even if it was at any other team, I wouldn't put myself in a position if I wasn't, I was just doing it sort of for publicity or whatever it was, um, and Sai would never do that with anybody, um, and me and Sai are very, very close off the pitch, but certainly when it comes to, when it comes to this, it's, it will never, ever be anything to do with that. So you mentioned before, 
that you obviously missed that sort of dressing room banter element. How are you enjoying being back the amongst best, it again? Best show in the world. I feel like a different person, honestly. I really do. It's the best. Uh, sometimes, though, I, I, don't, I mean, I think, as I said to the group, that a few of the experienced players, um, and I was mentioned in that experience, but I don't feel <laughs> experienced at all to help anybody at all. Um, but generally, I, I've never been, I feel alive again. Something. I, I, that's the thing, when I, when I left, that was always the thing that, you felt, almost felt dead inside at times that you didn't have that anymore. And no matter what work you go to, um, no matter what sort of job you do or whatever it is, you never seem to, that never, you never get that and you never get the plain side of it. Going to win on a Saturday, there's no better feeling that, but for me at times, that can be rivaled with the dressing room banter. I, I love that. As long as everything's done properly on a Saturday, um, and I've never felt, because I, I never, I mean, as the years went on, I never thought I was going to get that back and to be put in that situation again, generally is the best feeling in the world. It's just, it's amazing in there. So today you've also been announced as part of Sai's backroom staff. How excited are you to take the next step in your coaching journey as well? Amazing. I think that's always been, always been the thing with me is I love, I love a laugh and I love coming up with a lot of nonsense as you know. Um, but I've always sort of coached when I stopped playing football and that was always the thing that drove me crazy. I was like, I hope people don't think when I coach, I'm coming up with stuff, I'm coming up with the podcast, you know what I mean? And sometimes then when, when I was coaching, and I would maybe bring a player to the side or I was doing a drill and they could see I was being serious and you could see the full squad of players kind of looking, what's this guy doing? Do you know what I mean? We want to see him with his clays off or whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. Um, that's my mother, there, by the way. She loves all that anyway. Uh, yeah, be careful. So I, not, so I generally, I, coaching's, uh, coaching's a big passion to me and I, and I know I, 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 I need to stop this one but I always say in the podcast about all, I, I speak to Brendan Rodgers quite a bit on the coaches side and I think people are at the, think I'm at the wind up but generally I'm, I'm really really obsessed with uh, with coaching and styles of play and all, and all that type of stuff sometimes it can be people can go over the top if it was football do you know what I mean but when it um, to be a part of that and it goes it goes back to the same as what we're talking about as a player to be part of part of this team and be part of side staff it is no messing about it is no this is open goal, it's a laugh or whatever, it's not at all. This is as professional as it can be, so I just kind of wait really to get, keep it going. So pre-season started last week. How's the atmosphere been in the camp so far and how's the new squad settling in? The squad's a joke, to be honest. The, the squad's amazing. I don't want it to be, sometimes you don't want it to be too much, praise them too early and then it can get to their heads or whatever, but I think that it's a great group. There's been, size recruitment has been incredible the time that he's, he's had and the time that he's got them in. Um, but the levels they've come back at, I remember Sai said, maybe a month foot, he's a month away from starting and he said to the boys I want you to come back in this shape, I want you to come back ready to work, don't be coming back overweight and all that and most managers and coaches will say that to you but boys don't really maybe, it's summer you want to enjoy it but these boys have come back in unbelievable shape, the fitness is incredible but the most important thing for, for, for me is that the ability of them early on, sometimes when I used to go back pre-season and lots of players, their touch was miles off it but these boys have started incredible um, and I'm, I'm not surprised as in, I knew they were good players, obviously with Sai recruitment, Sai obviously, he doesn't recruit anybody, even if there's a top player there, he'll not get them unless it fits his style, um, fitness levels of the player and when he meets them he needs to feel that he, 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 they've got an understanding of each other, but actually seeing them, the ability they've got early on, it has surprised me slightly, I did think they were going to be good but no one may be as good as they have been, um, so it's going to be exciting this season. So what can any Open Goal fans who are maybe considering coming along a game to support, what can they expect from a home game here at Broadwood? Well, for, for an atmosphere point of view, I, I've always been mad. When, when I first came to Open Goal, when we'd done the Tenant show for the first show, the place was electric, it was alive, and it made us feel that. It kind of brought us back to, well, brought, me, uh, brought me back to being sort of, back in that environment with fans and stuff and creating that uh, atmosphere. Then they, support, they, they followed us to the, to the fringe, um, then we'd done SWG, I mean, we'd done Fit Nights there and the place was full every night. Um, done two hydro shows, we'd done the wee show, not the wee show, the show at um, St Luke's the other night. I don't know what the crowd have been, always been unbelievable and I, I, know, I know that sounds really soppy sometimes when players come out and talk about or a date for the fans, not, but the people who support us have changed their lives and I don't mean financially, I just mean giving us the opportunity to perform in, that, in front of that amount of people. And now, It'd be amazing if we've got the, the, the big push now for the, the, the team. Um, and the Friday, I mean, I love the Friday night idea of 
Because we, we know, obviously, people will more support teams in the, the top league, do you know what I mean? So the Friday night, nobody plays, in, plays that, so it'll be a chance for our crowd to come down and support the boys. And I think I genuinely think it will be electric. I want it to be electric, but I think it will be electric. And um, the boys will need to be, up, we need to be ready for that, because if they're not, then they'll not play. And I'll, be, I'll make sure of that. <laughs> so the documentary on your comeback is due to be released next week on Open Goal YouTube channel. How was that eight-week journey for you from your medical starting it out to eventually signing now for Open Goal Brown Hill? A roller coaster to be, to be honest with you. Um, the start was difficult because how far I was away from where I thought I would have been. Um, but then I was, for, for, strangely, I was actually quite strong. That I was determined to do it. It was for a month non-stop we were getting there. Um, and then the Covid came and it seemed to put me back to where my head can put me, where it can be weak mentally or I can make excuses. I, I find that where I've looked back at my sort of life and whatever and it's easy to just, we can all make excuses for anything. Any day you can sort of think, well, make an excuse not to do that. I actually find myself doing that at times and I found myself doing that through, after the COVID, think, oh, well, I need to get, I mean, I had COVID for 10 days, then give myself another week to get out of the system, then another week to take it slow. Before you know it, you're three, three weeks behind. So then uh, speaking to sort of Sai and speaking to Cammy, the fitness guy, and even speak to the family and stuff, they're like, you don't need to do it. What you, what you make excuses for? You're wasting yourself time, you're wasting your time, you're wasting the the club's time or whatever it is. But then that's when I say to myself, well, I do want to do it. I do want to get that feeling back. Um, and as I said, there's no feeling like playing or making people proud of you. Or make yourself proud of going back out and playing. It's been obviously a long time, a lot of bad injuries and stuff, but they're fine. So there's no, there's no excuses in that side now. So it's been, um, it's been amazing and, and tough at the same time, but I just can't wait to get started now. So you know a lot of people have played or are still playing the professional game. Has anyone given you any advice on what to expect? So obviously you've been out a long time. Aye. Now you're coming back. Have you taken on any advice from anyone? A few boys have just said, just leave it. I mean, you're only good enough in the first place, so just <laughs> leave it and you've got away with it. Do you know what I mean? You've got one game for Selic and people think you're a Selic player. You never were. Do you know what I mean? So, no, but I mean, I spoke to, spoke to James and he said, listen, you're still young. You're 30 year old. You're no players now can play to 30. And it, what, something... Big Charlie, I don't want to name drop here, but it's good, isn't it? If you yeah, go, yeah. you know these guys. So, <laughs> Big Charlie actually said to us, he was like, I have not played in years, but you've no, you've no actually like put your body through it. Whereas the last sort of eight years, whatever it is, we've been putting our body through it, a season after season, pre season, where we've been I mean, killing ourselves. You've not been doing anything. So, you should actually be fresh in a way. You might not have the same sort of wee sharpness at first, but in a way, I've not done it. And so, I feel now that um, really I'm a 22 year old, body wise. You never know, by the way. But no, listen, I think with the, the boys and then McFadden, I, you, you'll see that in the documentary. McFadden's words were amazing. Because um, he obviously, when he, his was completely different. He was obviously later. But he's like, you need to date for yourself. Like, if you if you genuinely don't feel it, 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 like, you don't feel you want to date, there's no point in trying to please, but you'll never date. You'll let people down. You'll let yourself down. Um, and about the energy and stuff, he was like, you obviously look after your body. The best advice it was, he said, your diet, don't change your diet, just eat what you want. So that was person, you know what I mean? He's constantly <laughs> eating junk. But no, it was, um, everybody Everybody has, has been amazing, to be fair. Sometimes I think the way I'm a, you don't know whether if people are going to take it serious or not. Um, and when it comes to football, I can't, couldn't be more serious. So when people have gave up their time, I think Sai was saying the same, the managers that have gave up their time, they don't need to do that. Do you know what I mean? They don't need to do that for us, especially when we've been slotting them for the last three years. <laughs> but now nah, everybody's been brilliant, Miss. No, brilliant, Slaney, and congratulations, all the best for the oh, season. Oh, thank you very much, Michael. You've been great earlier. <laughs> Drop my man now to do a wee bit. <laughs> I shock him. <laughs>